Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about rate limiting and also the name topic complex framework in CZ but with bucket for J. And before I start, I think I have to introduce myself. So my name is Max. People call me Max, and I have more than eight years of commercial experience in Java, and also I'm co-author of bucket for j library, which provides great limiting, and I'm co-author of the book. I released my first book eight months ago about Spring Crest, and also I'm co-author uh, co of Sensitive Publication, so one of the sp uh, Sensitive Publication about rate limiting, and in my spare time I write articles um, for Java community mostly about rate limiting. And what is what I'm going to talk about? So what rate limiting is? Which type of algorithm we're providing uh, and implementing for, for rate limiting? So why sometimes we should use rate limiting uh, on application level instead on infrastructure? Because usually when we s talk about rate limiting, mostly uh, people think about uh, we should use rate limiting on infrastructure level and use a proxy and Jinx, API Gateway, and uh, some API Manager, but not in Java. And I will highlight main area to use it. So in Java, main area to use rate limiting, and also in total, main area to use rate limiting. And yeah, sure, why should use bucket for J uh, in Java code? And before we start, I have a few questions. Tell me, please, raise your hand who have, have uh, used rate limiting ever. Perfect. So, but who has ever worked with rate limiting on application level? So when I say application level, I mean Java code. It can be everything. So resili resilience for J, perfect. Google go up a bucket for J, rate limiting for J. So who has ever worked with bucket for J? Tell me, please. No? Okay, nobody. Okay, as I expected. <laughs> okay, um, so small map legend. When I say bandwidth, I mean a limit. When I say multi bandwidth, I mean that of limits. And when I say application level, I mean on the level of Java code. And if you have some questions during the speech, please uh, ask me your question at the end of my speech. Thank you. Okay, first of all, what rate limiting is? So rate limiting is opportunity to restrict our calls to our um, API or if we need to restrict some calls to external API. So for example, we have, um, we have a controller and we need to provide some limits, not more often than 100 calls per one hour. And we just set limit to our API and nobody cannot use uh, out of this limit. This is the main idea of rate limiting. So, and here I highlighted a few areas when and where we should use uh, rate limiting. The first point is um, the most expectable, to protect our system from external requests. Uh, the second point, when we need to realize contract requirement. So it works on both sides. When we uh, realize contract requirements using some external API and we are providing this API. How it looks in practice? That's amazing. We have three types of tariffs, business, uh, basic, premium, and we have some scope of uh, endpoints. And each tariff has personal limits. So it can be multi bundle width. So for example, basic for up your friends has a limit not more often than 1,000 calls per one hour, and at the same time, not more often than 10,000 calls per one day. So for the business, we have uh, x six times bigger limits uh, than basic, and for premium, we have x four times uh, more uh, of basic. So it, it was second point to realize contract requirements. The second point is to recognize fraud and tunnel detection. So that's amazing. We have a forum, and at some time, we need to recognize some person who published some messages um, at some 
more than, I don't know, 100 messages per one hour. And you need to find this user and do something. And based on limiter, it's possible to do that. And I mean, when I say about forum, I don't mean like Reddit, because in Reddit, they have a rule not more often than publish a message uh, than one time per five minutes in each thread. It's some another type of forum. And next point, to protect an external system from us. So what do I mean? Um, let's imagine we are working in microservice, um, microservice environment, and we know one of the microservices uh, has not so huge uh, random access memory and CPU, and um, we want to protect some external service from us. So we don't want to create some DDoS attack. And when we talk about rate limiting, we need to understand which type of algorithm uh, we should use. In Java world and in rate limiting world, it sounds strange, rate limiting world, we have many types of algorithms. So we have liquid bucket, token bucket, uh, fixed window. But in, 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 in my report, I will not compare this type of algorithm. I will talk only about the token bucket algorithm. And, and as you can see on the screen, this is the main idea how it works. We have a bucket with some counts of tokens. And each time when someone calls to our API, we call to consumer. A consumer try to take some count of tokens. If we have enough tokens, is it okay? If you don't have enough tokens, just return false, and the rate limiter uh, will say to us uh, false. So, but when someone um, takes this token, sh someone should put it. And this is the main function of refiller. So, on a regular basis, refill or refill our tokens into the buckets, um, but in practice it works a little bit different. Uh, before we do consume, we call the refiller and refill, refill some count of tokens. And here is an example in Java code. In order to implement, is it okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, in, in order to implement this algorithm in Java, we need only four variables. So the first variable is capacity. It's maximum possibility of tokens into our bucket. The next variable is available tokens. This is the current state of our tokens. So uh, how many tokens we have in, um, in our bucket um, at, this, uh, at this time. And the next variable is non second to generation token. So how much time we need to generate only one token. And the next variable is last refill on a time. So this is the time when we refilled our tokens last time. And on the stage of initialize, we have a construct. And in order to, to set these values, we need only two variables, permits and duration. So permits and duration this is the main uh, idea of rate limiting. So how many permits? we can execute per some duration. So for example, not more often than 100 tokens per one hour. And in order to set that, so for set knowledge to duration token, all what we need to do, just the white period uh, to permits, uh, in order to uh, set a last refill now time, we just on the station initialize current time, and in order to set capacity and available tokens, we just set uh, current count of permit, because on the station initialize, usually uh, these variables are equal. And this is the main, main function, try consume. And this out of per account of permits, how many permits we need to consume. Usually when we work, I think everyone is here works uh, with RESTful API, consume only one token, but sometimes we have a situation when we need to consume more than one token. And before we do consume, uh, we do refill. But the main idea of this method uh, to check, do we have enough tokens or not? If we have enough tokens, okay, we just reduce these tokens from available tokens and just return true. If you don't have enough tokens, we just uh, exit from the method. And here is refill method. This is the main method uh, of the logic of the token bucket algorithm. OK, what is the main idea here? First of all, we need to get current time. The second one, uh, we need to find what's the difference between last refill time and current time. And after, 
we check, do we have enough time to generate only one token or not? If we don't have enough to the time to generate one, one token, we just return out of method and do this action, which related with try consume. Okay, we have enough tokens. After, um, <coughs> we need to find how many tokens we can generate and put it in, into our bucket. When we check it, when we find it, uh, we just set to available tokens and refresh our current time. So, but what is the main advantage of the token bucket algorithm? I think nobody guess, because um, at rate limiting world we have a few algorithms. Sorry, I will not compare in this report. And I think nobody guess the main advantages, because the main advantages is memory, because in order to implement this algorithm, we need only four variables. So the first variable is volume of bucket, it's our capacity. Because it's long, we spend eight bytes. Current count of tokens, spent only eight bytes. So count of generation in new token, eight bytes, and also last time refill. So when we uh, last time refill it, our, um, our tokens, we spent only eight bytes. And because usually we work in 64-bit JDK, so we have default user of object and it spans for uh, uh, 12 bytes. And now currently it's 34 bytes, but because we, are working, we work usually in 64-bit JDK, our object should be part of multiple of eight and just plus four bytes, in total we have 48 bytes in order to realize this type of algorithm. But usually in practice, um, it spends much more time because we work um, in some distributed system and using some cache and we have some wrapper of this uh, bucket. But the main idea is to save our memory. And one time, uh, someone asked me why we should think about memory in Java because we have garbage collector and on regular basis we just uh, remove unnecessary, useless uh, things and stuff uh, from our memory in Java. But usually, we store our buckets for the long, for the very long time because it's our limit, and we need to save uh, our memory. The first thing, the second thing, our rate limit usually it's 0.0001 of main functionality in each application, because it's, it's the really smallest part. And write limiting shouldn't spend much memory. So, and actually, when we use by strict theory, theory uh, our rate limiting, so we spent, um, for example, for one gigabit, 25 million buckets. There's a main idea why we should think about memory in Java, because when we use another type of algorithms, we spend a little bit more memory. And I, I like this man. Um, sure, when we, so now I'm, I'm talking about rate limiting in Java, and I think not everyone uses rate limiting on the, on the application level, and um, usually I faced uh, with a question, why we realize rate limiting on the level of Java, because we have hub proxy engines, we have um, other API manager, API gateway, why we should think, because it's usually it's not a part of business logic, and we should, um, I don't know, out of our application. And yes, yes, sure, if you can use it, you can use it of infrastructure level, but sometimes you can face uh, with some complex rate limiting. And I've highlighted a few RS uh, when and where you should use rate limiting on the application level. So the first, the first one, if you want to manage your limits from Java, just for example, um, we have an application which providing API to the world. So I don't know, PDF generator. I think nobody used PDF generator here, but for example. And <coughs> we want on the stage when we create some limit, create this limit from the Java application. So for the first one. For the second one to implement complex limits. For example, uh, we have three, four limits per each user and per, per each um, endpoint. And 
it sounds like a not complex limit, but it's too hard to realize to implement it through the infrastructure level. Just for example, when you use hub proxy, I've never seen how to realize some coupling things uh, through the infrastructure level. And through the Java, it's ra really easy to realize, just to spend a few, a few lines we need. When we want to rebalance our limits, for example, at the same time, we have a limit um, not more often than 100 tokens per one hour, and current state of our tokens are equals to uh, 14. Mm -hmm. And at some time, something happened in, uh, with our application, and we need to rebalance our limits. So, and when we use infrastructure level, I don't, s I have never seen uh, when we have opportunity to rebalance this limit. Usually, we do reset. So, and forgot about our previous values. But sometimes it can be very important. The next point is monitoring limits. So I will show this point a little bit later. And the main idea here, you can see all of your limits through the Prometheus, Dropfeasor, or other monitoring system. And you will see uh, how we can work with monitoring system uh, through the bucket for j because we can see uh, each limits uh, for each endpoints and for each user. And through the application level, it's really easy to implement. Yeah, sure. The, second, uh, the next point is simple application. When we just mm, don't want to think about um, how proxy or Jinx or other, L, uh, other things. And the last point, when we need uh, for receiving some detailed inform information about about our buckets, about our limits. Um, for example, we need to find and we need to get information about each limits so, uh, <coughs> from our bucket. So through the infrastructure level, it's, hard, it's too hard to realize it. And about bucket for j So currently, it's the most popular library in Java world, uh, which is providing uh, rate limiting features. So each month, Download it so for more than uh, 250 times, uh, 250,000 times from Mount Central. So use it in Kubernetes, Java Client, Ape Hipster, Armeria, Atlas, and Twitch, and other libraries, other famous libraries. And this is a small, small part of our API, which we realize it in, um, in bucket for j And as you can see, our functionality divided on three parts. So the first part is basic functionality. Here we have opportunity to work with multi-bundle width management. I will talk about that a little bit later. So in distributed API, the main idea here um, to work in distributed env environment. So we have opportunity to work uh, with each um, database which realizes it by JSR 107 and 7 Java specification requests. So it's Hazelcast, uh, Apache Ignite, Infinity Spam, uh, Oracle Coherence, and yes, sure, it's Jcash originally. Uh, also, we have opportunity to work on um, this Redis integration and DynamoDB. And yeah, sure, uh, we have integration with MySQL, uh, PostgreSQL, and we have custom framework. When you need to realize your custom implementation, just for example, you want to uh, implement uh, opportunity work with uh, Oracle through the select for rate or some type of uh, pessimistic log. You can do that through this type of framework. And today, mostly, I will talk about advanced API. So, uh, the first API is monitoring API. As I said earlier, this opportunity to wo to monitor our API. Um, I will not, unfortunately, talk about diagnostic and modeling time API. And on the flag configuration placement, this opportunity to reconfigure in runtime our configuration. Mm -hmm. e and we have batching KPI. So batching KPI give to us opportunity to optimize current of um, calls to our database to remove bottleneck from database. OK. Before I start talking about advanced part of API, I want to show a few simple examples. So, and as you can see, to start working with bucket J, all what we need to do, just add dependence. Okay, it's expectable. So, the next point, uh, this is a simple code example. And as you can see, 
on the screen to start working with bucket for jail what, what we need to do to create fir our first bundle with man management so uh, here I created a rule not more often than consume one token per one minute after we set this bundle width, uh, bundle width uh, to our bucket <coughs> and try to do first try consume. Yeah, sure. And first try consume will return true to us, but second try consume will return false to us because we're out of limit. Here is an example with uh, multi bundle width. Um, what is the main idea here? Uh, here we can create a few rules to our bucket and set these rules to our bucket. Here we have uh, two, two limits, so not more often than nine tokens per one minute and not more often than five tokens per one minute. And mm -hmm. when we create our bucket and try to do first try consume, fir first try consume will return true to us. After, we're going to sleep for a second and try to do the second try consume, but second try consume will return false to us because we are out of limit of the first rule, not more often than nine tokens per one minute. And after when we uh, try to get uh, some current state of available tokens, this method will return four to us. But mm, we have a little bit modernization about the token bucket algorithm and uh, first time the token bucket algorithm uh, was published in IEEE in 1990s, but during the more than 25 years, uh, nobody tried to modernize this algorithm. But we in Bucket for J uh, modernize this algorithm, and <coughs> we do improvement and give opportunity to work with multi bundle widths, bundle widths, and that's amazing. We have two buckets. First bucket uh, has a rule, not more often than two tokens to consume per one second, and the second one, not more often than five tokens per one minute. And we need to consume only two tokens. And before we do that, we do refill. So we refill at our tokens, and after, how to understand do we have enough tokens to consume or not? Yeah, sure. We need to find a bucket with a fewer count of tokens. When we found it, we just check. Do we have enough tokens or not? If we have enough tokens, we just reduce all these tokens from all of our buckets. So, and the next example is distributed card example. So, the main idea here is absolutely the same example, which I show it in this slide, but through the Hazel class instance, I do that. So the first line, I just create new Hazelcast clients, which base it on our Hazelcast configuration. And after I get in mob, where are we storing our buckets? And through the proxy manager, uh, I set our configuration and creating our first bucket. So, and when we do first try consume through the enter processor, uh, we execute our code on the stage of uh, database and first try consume will return true to us. So second expectable we will return false to us. So and mostly in this report I want to talk about advanced features because when usually people think about rate limiting, rate limiting everyone think it sounds like easy, but they have advanced part of our API and we have really hard things. Let's start from monitoring API. So what monitoring API is. This opportunity to monitor all of our actions which related with our bucket and we can monitor all of our limits and do that uh, to monitor all of limits which related with uh, our user for example which all of our endpoints and we can monitor all, all of our limits. When we should use it? Oh, before that. Um, which type of metrics uh, we can monitor before we uh, first when we consume token, when we reject token, and other things, uh, but it's not related with our wrapper, unfortunately. <laughs> so this is another type of API. So how to how to do that? 
So here I created a bucket uh, with bandwidth, and after I created two counters uh, through the parameters. After I overrided, uh, overrided bucket listener and set this action through the increment and set this uh, bucket listener to our bucket. So how it works in practice? So I already started this. I have three, wait a few seconds. Yeah, sure, I have an point and <coughs> uh, each time when we call, oh, looks, looks good. Uh, when I call to this endpoint, when we have enough tokens, our, our endpoint will return perfect. When we don't have enough tokens, our endpoint will return not perfect. Wait a few seconds. I need to go out of limits one more time and let's go to the Grafana. Here I realize it. <coughs> okay, I think we need a little bit more calls to see how it works in practice. Yeah, sure. And as you can see, you can monitor here uh, how many tokens we consume it and how many tokens we reject it. But you can do that much harder because um, here you can uh, overwrite opportunity to work with each user and each limit. It's just example. So <coughs> the next thing is on the fly configuration replacement. So where is that? That's amazing. Uh, at some time, we are a P provider, and at some time, we need to change our limits. So, and if we work through the infrastructure level, we don't have opportunity in order to do that because usually we do reset. So we have a limit, not more often to consume than 100 tokens per one hour. And at the same time, currently we have um, 40, 40 tokens. And <coughs> when we work uh, through the infrastructure level, we do reset and after reconfiguration our tokens, we have uh, level of capacity. So if we can reconfigure up to 200 tokens, we have current state of 200 tokens. And unfortunately, for business, it sounds not so good. Okay, uh, in which cases we should use it? The first case, when we are a P provider and we need change limits of verification. So I think understandable points. And the second point, when we use uh, some external API and we need to change uh, our configuration because we don't want to out of limit of external API. And we have a few strategies uh, to realizing it. So the first strategy is proportionality. Just, for example, we have capacity of 100 tokens and current state of available tokens are equals of uh, 40. And we need to rebalance our, our tokens uh, to multiple times, up to 200 tokens. And we just move through the proportionality strategy from 40 to 80 tokens. This is the first strategy. The second strategy as is. We just move our current tokens to, to a new limit. The next is reset, the most common usable. We just reset all of our tokens and capacity will equal of available tokens. And we have additive, so it's a must herder. Um, how it works? If we want to rebalance our, our tokens, we just move current state of our tokens to a new limit and difference between previous limits and current limits um, add to our available tokens. Okay. How to start working with on-the-fly configuration replacement? So when we create a bucket, we set our personal ID for each bandwidth. Um, and after, after some time, we need uh, to reconfigure our, our buckets. We're creating our personal bucket configuration with the same IDs. And after, uh, we just use replace configuration through, uh, through the some strategy. So it can be proportionality, additive, or as is, or other else. Okay, 
But when we change our limit um, and change our configuration on one knot, so we change this limit in everywhere because, for example, one they cannot try to set new configuration. At the same time, the record has a uh, locket and nobody cannot call this record up to this time when our configuration uh, re will refresh. After, when our configuration refreshed, our database storing a new configuration. And after, we have a new configuration and each node uh, will work with a new configuration. Okay, how it works in practice. Um, I brought small application. Yeah, sure, but I need to run it. Yeah, keep going. Uh, yeah, I, I brought small application uh, which includes three endpoints. The first endpoint uh, will return all of our limits. So here we have our limit, so not more often than 16, to, uh, 16 token uh, per one hour and current state of our token now uh, equals 33. Now wait a second, I have to resend one more time. Yeah, we have uh, not more often than 20 tokens per one hour uh, and current state of tokens I equals 20. And the second one is upgrade. Uh, upgrade our configuration, just update. And the last one is test, um, test endpoint to consume some tokens. Okay. And as you can see, we have current state of our tokens, I equals is 20. And after Let's call a few times to our API. And as you can see, our tokens has refreshed because current state of our tokens equals is 8. And when we refresh it, and after call. So here I set strategy called as proportionality. I, through the proportionality, rebalance all of my tokens. So, I think it should be understandable. I hope. Okay, going next. Batching API. So, worry that. Um, this is opportunity to batch all of our calls to the database, to database, and life amazing. We have a key, and to this key, uh, to the database, we have calls, I don't know, 100,000, 200,000 per one second, and we need to optimize because it's not possible to call each time when we call to or not call to the database because uh, we have a bottleneck called as database. And, okay, how to optimize it? So we found a solution called as batching API, and when we set our batch, uh, our optimization, uh, we have batch number zero. And when we call to, the to a database, first batch number zero will going with try consume, only one try consume. And at the same time, when our batch number zero starting processing, at the same time we are waiting for response, we are starting collecting a new batch. And here, just for example, uh, we can collect uh, 100,000 tokens, uh, consumes, I mean, uh, or infinity number we can consume. And when we get a result from the database, we stop with collecting our batch and send this batch to the database. And at the same time, we're starting to collect batch number two. So it works something like that. And do that on a regular basis. So. We have only one situation when we should use it, when we have high load calls by one key. So, because to remove bottleneck from uh, our database. And also we have three types of strategies, um, but here I will talk only about blotching API. So how it works from the point of code. 
we just on the stage when we create our bucket, we just set uh, our strategy of opti optimization, and this optimization works only on a client side. And how it works in practice? I brought a few tests to show it. So the first test, which based it on Hazelcast, and I'm gonna run this test without botching opti optimization. Let's try to run it. And here we should see how many tokens we try to consume per one second. Yeah, zero, 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 three, two, one. Yeah, here, okay, about 100,000 without optimization. Okay, let's try to optimize it. And don't forget, we do that through the in memory database, because in, me in memory database it's very fast stuff. Okay, 100,000 calls we have. Let's see how many calls we will have after botching optimization. And as you can see on the slides, okay, x free time better. Sounds not so good, but when we run it through the MySQL, we will see. Wait a few seconds. Turn off botching optimization. Try to run it. This select for update optimization, uh, but also we have a uh, implementation through the a few types of pessimistic logs. And as you can see, about 1,000 calls we can consume uh, from our bucket. And this test realizes it from test container. Okay, let's add our batch optimization and run one more time. Keep in mind, 1,000 calls per one second we can consume. Okay, much better, because here we can consume x22 multiple times, so much better. And based on this type of functionality, we remove bottleneck from our database, and you can consume much more tokens per one second. So, what is the conclusion of my report? So, the first conclusion is rate limiting is easy. Usually, rate limiting can be complex because uh, you can face it with a few things when you need to get a lot of limits, when you need to uh, start working with uh, multi-bundle width management, so with three, five limits per one user, per one endpoint, and you need to manage it. But it's much easier when you use Bucket4j. So I want to compare, let's do a little bit compare between other libraries in, in Java and just for example, resilience for j or Google Guava or other libraries has not opportunity to work with distributed systems. So we have a few libraries, such like uh, bucket for j in Java world, uh, which has opportunity to work with uh, distributed system. And rate limiting on application level, it's normally because we have many situations when we should use rate limiting on the application level, and it's okay. Okay, thank you so much for your attention, everyone. Thank you.